Hey everybody, welcome to the Tool of Experience Center. My name is Mark Friedman and I'm going to show you an example of a laboratory management system. We built this actually with the partner sequence. And in this example, we have a lab companion we're calling it, which is a mobile device that different people throughout the lab can use. Analysts as well as lab managers and so on are all going to be able to access different applications through this one mobile device. So that it's easy to see we're screencasting and mirroring this on the screen up here. Uh, but the same thing's happening on my tablet. So the first thing is, what does the lab do? Well, the lab receives samples from production and is required to perform tests. So we're actually going to receive this sample from the bioreactor. We're going to process this through the lab. To do that, we're first going to receive this. And if you look at the lab companion, you can see we have one sample to receive, as indicated by the notification as well on the left there. So as a sample management personnel, I'm going to open up this lab receipt application. And as we're giving these demos, we're going to be jumping between different applications and taking on different personas. So I'll make sure I describe what I'm doing and who I'm supposed to be at that time. But first things first is we want to actually accept this in to the lab and put it into storage. So I will press receive sample and I'm going to use the camera that's on this tablet to verify which sample I have and I've scanned it in. And then I'm going to confirm that and scan it into location, which is going to put it in the fridge so that the lab analysts know that it's ready to begin processing. So I'll scan the fridge. You'll notice that the fridge is lighting up to tell me where I should put it. And I'll confirm that storage location. So we just jumped from the lab companion app into the sample receipt app. And now as a lab analyst, I can see that I have a sample in progress. It's also represented on the dashboard that I have a sample that's been received. So as a lab analyst, I can look at my samples and I have two types of samples. I have bulk samples and test samples. Bulk samples are the samples that come directly from the lab. And you can see that they have a life cycle up here where first it's initially taken, then it's received, then it's in progress, completed, and finally we dispose of it. All the while we're able to review exactly who took this out of which bioreactor and when. So full chain of custody is here. We can see that Jane Doe received this into cold storage just now. The next type of sample is a test sample. So in order to create test samples, I have to jump into a different validated application called an aliquot procedure. So I'm going to open up this application and I have to get this sample from the fridge. So as a lab analyst, I can see it's in cold storage A. It's lighting up the location. I'm going to grab this sample. And if I grab the wrong sample, it's going to say it's invalid. So I actually have to get the correct sample for this procedure and scan that. So I've taken custody of this sample. It's now out of that location. And I have to aliquot this into two test samples. So this is going to basically create a UV spectrophotometer sample. So I'll press this button for demo purposes just to take 10 milliliters. And that's going to print out my test sample label. The next step in this aliquot procedure is to take out the pH test sample. So I'm going to aliquot 5 milliliters. Again, for demo purposes, I'm just going to go right through this. Print off my next test sample. And now I have three samples on my table. I need to put them back into storage or begin processing them. So I'm going to start by just scanning the bulk sample. And I'm going to scan it back into location because it has to remain in storage. I'll do the same for the other samples. And my final sample, instead of putting it in storage, I want to take it directly over to my other procedure, which is my pH test procedure. So I'm going to be able to jump directly into another application as the lab analyst and begin my pH test. So to do the pH test, I first need to acquire equipment. Now there could be many pieces of equipment available. I have to scan the right piece of equipment. For example, if I scan the fridge, it's not the right type of equipment. I have to scan a pH type. So when I scan this meter, I want to verify that I'm able to use it. So to do that, it has to be available, meaning no one else is using it. It has to be calibrated and it has to be cleaned. If it weren't calibrated, I wouldn't be able to acquire the equipment. I'd actually have to jump into a different procedure for calibration. But instead, for demo purposes, I'm just going to go right into acquiring the equipment. So now I've made this equipment unavailable and no one else can use it while I go get my sample. So my sample, I'm going to scan, confirm that this is the correct sample that I'm using, and it is. And I can begin my procedure. So in this demonstration, we're not actually going to connect to the pH meter, but 
you could just as easily connect to this as we have other equipment. I'm just going to show you the lab processes here. So again, we have rich media showing here, and I will move to the next step, which is to actually record the values from the pH meter. I'm going to simulate this as a passing value, but I could simulate a fail, or I could actually connect directly to the pH meter and confirm those results. And now that I've got those results, I'm going to dispose of the sample. Now that I've completed my pH test, I still have some more samples to process. So I'm going to click on the samples button as a lab analyst. This could be a different lab analyst. And I say I have another test sample to perform. So I'll click on the UV Viz test sample. Again, just like the bulk sample and other samples, I can see a whole history of what's going to happen in the life cycle of that test sample. You can see when it was aliquoted, who performed that um, process, and where it's currently stored. In this case, I'm going to execute this procedure. But for demo purposes and to simplify this, it's just going to be a single button that's going to complete and dispose of that sample. And now we're ready. As you can tell, the approvals button is now uh, showing up as one notification. So what happened here is, as a lab manager or someone who would approve of samples, I can click on this bulk sample, and it is now time for me to approve this because all the tests have been completed. Now you can see here that there's an automation that occurred. So when we complete test samples in the background, automations are running within Tulip, which are checking to see are all test samples complete. And if all test samples are complete, we're going to complete the bulk sample and make it ready for approval. So I can look at this and begin to approve those results. So I'm going to click the approve results, which jumps into another application. And maybe only certain people are allowed to use this application. And in this application, I can see essentially a batch review or a sample review of all the tests that occurred for this bulk sample. So I can review every step that happened with this bulk. And so far, even in who took it out and when of the uh, bioreactor, as well as what we want to display on the screen here. So for this simple example, we're just showing our test results. We can highlight any information from any part of the process. Maybe we took multiple test results. Maybe we had retests we wanted to do. In this case, we just have these two simple results I shared with you. And before these results can be sent back to production, we have to actually approve of these. If there are any deviations here, we have to review those deviations and approve of those as well. I can also click on any individual sample record for that bulk. And I can click on this test sample, like the pH one. And I can see its history. So what was the inspection record? What equipment did I use? What was the status of that equipment? All this information is stored along with every record. So I've looked at that, but now because everything's good, it's all passing, I'm going to sign off on this. And by signing off on this, I'm able to send and release those records to production. So with our partner sequence, we've created a, a lab companion that works hand in hand with different personas within your laboratory environment, going from sample receipt to sample processing, as well as sample approval for production. There's a couple other things we added here too, which I want to highlight. One of them is the frontline copilot. So I can select this copilot application. This is a more of a general purpose application, but typically what you'll find is in a lab or a production environment, you'll see a number of documents in a big bookshelf that show that this is where you would go to find procedures and answer questions. With Tulip, Tulip can be trained on all of these different procedures, and you can actually ask questions directly of these. So instead of searching through a library of books, you can actually talk directly uh, to these instructions and get answers to your questions on the fly. So maybe you're performing equipment maintenance, or you have questions about chemicals. All that stuff can be asked directly of your equipment and of your procedures here. Another interesting uh, thing I wanted to share was the equipment manager. So the maintenance team may be interested in this. It may not be a laboratory analyst who's performing maintenance, but you can use this for equipment logbooks and equipment maintenance. So here you can see a list of all the equipment in our facility here. If you look at this one up top, you can see that this one requires maintenance. So I can look at this equipment and see the history, the logbook of all the different procedures that have performed on it, including maintenance and production procedures or testing procedures, as well as the different maintenance procedures that have to occur. So I look at this maintenance procedure for the bulb replacement. This is the one that requires work. I can look at its history. I can see when it was last performed, who performed this exact procedure. I can also jump directly into this procedure from here and execute it. So by executing this procedure, it'll give me instructions on how to perform this maintenance activity. I can sign off on these, follow the instructions, and sign off that I've completed this procedure. Completing this procedure will put this equipment into a non-calibrated state which means that if I were performing the pH test and I went to run that, I would not be able to do that until I perform the calibration procedure. So we've just shown you an application built for laboratory operations. 
It shows how different personnel within the lab can perform tasks that are related to their workflows. For example, sample receipt, sample management, sample testing, approval, as well as equipment maintenance and even showcasing some frontline co-pilot within a laboratory setting. Thank you.